Hi, and welcome to another video. I'm Fatui, and as you might already have noticed, this here is all about Dragon Age. So, right now we are on um, Dragon Age Keep, uh, is the site called, and this here is a site that is um, pretty much dedicated for putting in your choices uh, to or from Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2. And with this here, you will be able to make a file or, ex or uh, upload the, all your choices and import uh, your cho these choices into Dragon Age Inquisition, which came out like a month or so ago. Uh, uh, onto PlayStation or whatnot platform you bought it on. So, uh, the story behind this here little video is that I, when Dragon Age Origin came out, I actually never played it. I've never played any of the Dragon Age games up uh, until two weeks ago, actually. Um, and the reason is, I don't know. <laughs> I actually can't remember why. I actually, on a Steam sale, at some point bought Dragon Age uh, a long time ago. I'd never played it, got lost in my backlog, and with all the DLC that came out, I only had Dragon Age Origins. I didn't have the Ultimate Edition, or the Deluxe Edition, or other editions that are out there. Um, anyway, so what I did is, uh, when um, Dragon Age Inquisition was about to be released, uh, I, uh, there, of course, there's been a lot of buzz and I've been listening to some of my online friends talking a lot about it and saying how awesome the other games were and I really didn't really, oh, that's crap, I, I don't care, I never played it, not, not interesting me, it's old, uh, I'm not going to boot it up, it's probably going to look horrible. So, um, at some point, Dragon Age Inquisition came out with a video, a gameplay video about dragons, and then I started to get interested. And I watched the video, and the dragon looks amazing, pretty much. And I'm a huge dragon nut, uh, and uh, that's probably because I played D&D back in the old days, I love dragons. I'm a huge Skyrim fan also, also because of dragons. I Played Daggerfall, never played Morrowind, didn't like Oblivion. Uh, again, that uh, since the when the dragon came on, I actually saw that I just got hooked. I mean, I don't know why. I'm I just love dragons, um, fantasy in general. So uh, when that came, uh, that video came out. I watched it, got fall fell in love with the game, and uh, then I started thinking maybe I should try it and i actually booted uh, dragon age origin up and i actually saw oh this game looks actually pretty good and it's actually four years old and it ran pretty well i thought well okay uh, i stopped playing uh went ahead okay where can i could i find a, a, a limited edition i found it for a good price and i picked it up and started playing it 72 gameplay hours later <laughs> i finished it uh and then i thought okay i need to play dragon age 2 got that uh bought all the dlc for it and i finished that two days ago started playing the dlc the two dlcs that are out legacy and uh, i finished a half an hour ago mark of the assassin i think it is with the uh famous uh uh act actress from the guild who had a role in that uh, as a voice actor and uh, uh, i think she also did the uh, uh the mocap on, on on the character but anyways uh great game and i started of course putting the all the choices that i've done into dragon age keep because i'm gonna get at some point dragon age position and play that um so uh, the idea here is, uh, instead of me uh, telling you all the choices that I've done, I am actually going to play to you the video that uh, you can play where Varric, 
uh, one of the characters in Dragon Age 2 that got introduced is actually telling you the story from Dragon Age Origins to Dragon Age 2. And you can see right here, I've pretty much filled everything out. And that's what I'm going to do. And when I start streaming or playing uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, I upload these videos here. You can go ahead and watch this here and check out all the choices that I've made so you know what I did. And also, I know what I did because I will probably forget it. <laughs> so, if no further ado, let's actually start this up. So, I am going to turn off my mic and let you enjoy these here minutes. I don't know actually how long it's going to be, 10 minutes maybe, uh, maybe more. And uh, let you watch this here movie. So, enjoy. And remember, subscribe, comment, uh, like, dislike. Tell me if you, if you, <laughs> if you have any comments to the choices that I've made. If you didn't, if you have more comments, why you didn't like this uh, this here video, or why you liked it. If it can't be done with thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. Bye. If you believe the stories, mankind's pride gave rise to the Darkspawn. Countless in number and toxic to all life, Darkspawn search endlessly for an archdemon. When they find one, Darkspawn armies surge up from their corrupt barrows beneath the ground, and a blight begins. Grey Wardens are the only warriors capable of destroying an Archdemon, and history always honors the one who sacrifices all to kill the beast. In the Fifth Blight, the Warden was the hero of Ferelden, youngest child of Ferelden's powerful Terran Kusland. Betrayal saw the Kusland's ancestral castle burn, and the Terran and his wife slain. Duncan, a Grey Warden, helped the young noble escape to a new life with the Wardens. The allied Ferelden and Grey Warden forces met in Ostagar, where King Kaelin's armies and a host of Wardens gathered, ready to destroy the Darkspawn. But Valor turned to despair as Loghain betrayed his king. Kaelin's forces were slaughtered, and the South was lost. The hero, now a full-fledged Grey Warden, survived with the aid of Flemeth, the mysterious Witch of the Wilds. Joined by Flemeth's daughter, Morrigan, and a Grey Warden named Alistair, the hero set out to build an army strong enough to abolish the Blight. With the traitorous Loghain now seated on Ferelden's throne, the Warden sought help from the influential Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. However, they arrived in Redcliffe to find the town under siege, as each night, undead rose in waves and assailed the battered village. With the hero's help, the people of Redcliffe stood fast against the undead horde. The Wardens reached Arl Eamon's castle only to find the Arl lying at the edge of death and his court fallen into madness. To save his father's life, Eamon's young son, Connor, had made a deal with a demon and quickly fallen victim to its possession. The hero intervened, freeing Connor from possession and breaking the demon's hold over Redcliffe. But deals with demons are never straightforward. The demon agreed only to save Eamon's life, not restore him to health. Our Eamon needed a miracle to recover. The hero located an urn containing the sacred ashes of Andraste, which were said to cure any ailment. The urn was protected by ancient traps, tests of will, and a dragon-worshipping cult that wanted to twist the urn's power to its own ends. The urn remained pure, but mysteriously disappeared after the Wardens departed. Only the temple dedicated to it still stands. With a pinch of the ashes, the hero restored the Arl to health. Informed of Loghain's treachery, Eamon swore his political and military support. The Circles of Magi are bound by oath to aid the Grey Wardens in times of blight. However, Lake Kalanad's tower could offer little help. One of its mages, Aldred, had become possessed by a pride demon, 
and was twisting other circle mages into abominations. The hero fought to the top of the tower and defeated Uldred, saving the remaining mages. Grateful for their lives, the mages joined the Warden's army. The allies gained at the Circle were not the only soldiers to join the Warden's forces, however. Dalish elves don't usually make alliances, but even deep hatred can be set aside in the face of oblivion. An ancient curse was destroying Ferelden's largest Dalish clans, turning the elves into werewolves. Zathrian, the clan's keeper, claimed that the cure required the heart of the great wolf, Witherfang. Years before, Zathrain himself had afflicted a group of humans with the curse that now ravaged his clan. As long as he lived, the curse endured. The hero freed the werewolves from the long-standing curse, and the Dalis joined the Warden's forces. Blights may happen hundreds of years apart, but the dwarves who live below the surface of Thetis fight Darkspawn every day. No one is better schooled in battling Darkspawn than the warriors of Orzammar, except perhaps their allies of old, the Grey Wardens. The hero arrived in Orzammar in the wake of King Endrin's death to find political factions fighting for control of the Dwarven capital. Only the vote of a venerated paragon could break the deadlock to elect a ruler and order the dwarves to honor their Grey Warden treaty and join the battle against the New Blight. The hero set off to find a paragon named Branca, who had disappeared into the Deep Roads in search of a legendary artifact, the Anvil of the Void, created by the renowned smith Caradon to forge mighty war golems. With Branca's help, the hero restored the Anvil of the Void, and a small army of powerful golems joined the Warden's forces. The hero emerged from the deep roads with a master-forged crown to bestow the Paragon's favor upon whichever rival candidate would be crowned king. Malin, the youngest son of King Andrin who was suspected of foul play, or Haramont, the aging traditionalist backed by the Dwarven Assembly. Lord Haramont claimed the crown of Orzammar. His traditionalist values keep dwarves first in all things and safely as far underground as possible. With Dwarden's strength now bolstering the Warden's army, the hero had to deal with Loghain so Ferelden could stand unified against the Darkspawn before the Blight swallowed the world. The kingdom of Ferelden stood divided. While some nobles supported Loghain's regency, others condemned his inaction against the Darkspawn. Civil war brewed, and Arl Eamon called a landsmeet in hopes of curtailing the conflict and removing Loghain from the throne. Loghain was found guilty of treason, and the hero carried out his execution in Denerim's palace. As the Warden's united army massed in Redcliffe, the Darkspawn overran Denerim laying siege to Ferelden's capital city. The hero's army fought valiantly through Denerim and broke the Darkspawn siege. On Fort Dracon's highest tower, the hero's strongest allies fought alongside the Warden in a final heroic battle against the massive Archdemon. The Archdemon was killed without the sacrifice of a Grey Warden's life. With no Archdemon to lead them, the Darkspawn scattered. Most fled underground, still teeming in number and always seeking a new archdemon to awaken. The shattered kingdom of Ferelden embarked on a long journey to recovery. In the Blight's aftermath, strong leadership was crucial. Alistair, half-brother to King Caelan, became Ferelden's new king, and the line of rulers who descended from Calanad the Great remained unbroken. Ferelden still stands, as obstinate and resolute as the Dog Lords ever are, but the events of the Fifth Blight loom over it as the nation rebuilds. For people across Thetis, legends of the hero of Ferelden remain the nation's brightest beacons of hope during its darkest times. It all began in Kirkwall, the fall of Knight Commander Meredith, the Kunari Uprising, and of course, the Chantry's destruction and the onset of Mage Rebellion. 
One person always stood amidst the swirling chaos. Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. The Hawk family fled Lothering, refugees from the Blight. Leandra, mother of the champion and siblings Bethany and Carver, hoped to find refuge at her family's estate in Kirkwall, far to the north. As a mage with a family legacy of magic on both sides, Hawk naturally became involved in the events that ultimately led to the Mage Rebellion. The Hawks escaped the Blight with the help of Aveline Valen, a warrior and family friend. It's said that the family was also aided by Flemeth, the notorious Witch of the Wilds. Hawk's sister Bethany never reached the Free Marches. She was killed by Darkspawn while defending her family. The family's first years in Kirkwall were difficult. Leandra's brother Gamlin had lost the family fortune. The Hawks lived in poverty, forced to indenture themselves in return for entrance to the city. To pay off the debt, Hawk was forced to work for a band of mercenaries. All the while, Hawk and Carver did their best to hide Hawk's magic from the Templars. Opportunity eventually struck in the form of a dwarf named Bartrand Tethras, who was planning an expedition to the Deep Roads. It was a long shot, but with gold gained from the expedition, Hawk could free the family from its criminal creditors and further Templar scrutiny. Hawk met a rogue Grey Warden named Anders, who possessed detailed maps of the Deep Roads. These maps were crucial to the expedition's success. Once Hawk obtained them, everything else fell quickly into place. Carver joined Hawk on the expedition. The siblings found ancient dwarven treasure and a statuette formed from a strange red lyrium. Tragically, Carver fell victim to the blight that suffuses the deep roads and died in his siblings' arms. The gold Hawk recovered from the deep roads brought back Leandra's stately childhood home in Hightown. The Hawks had barely settled into their new home when Leandra was murdered. A deeply sinister and twisted killing. Hawk hunted down Quentin, the blood mage responsible, but could not prevent Leandra's death. Leandra's tragic death was part of a critical problem facing Kirkwall. Rising tension between the city's mages who felt increasingly oppressed, and Templars, who grew increasingly suspicious of their activities. Adding to the strain, a large contingent of Kunari had also established themselves in Kirkwall, much to the growing discomfort of the city's rulers. After their dreadnought was shipwrecked many years before, a group of stranded Kunari were allowed to remain in a cordoned off area in Lowtown. As time passed, the Kunari made no effort to return home and offered no explanation about why they remained. Tensions rose to a breaking point. Revered Mother Patrice, convinced the Kunari were a threat to the Chantry's faith, incited violence between the Kunari and the Kirkwall populace. Hawk knew that Patrice would bring about unnecessary conflict. Though the champion tried to stop her, Patrice orchestrated the murder of Seamus Dumar, a Viscount's son and a recent convert to the Kuhn. When her crime was discovered, a Quinari assassin killed her. After Seamus was murdered, the Arashak of the Quinari group lost patience with the humans of Kirkwall. They would now submit to the Kuhn or die. The Quinari struck hard and fast. They took the palace in Hightown and beheaded the Viscount to immediately quash any resistance. Aided by Knight Commander Meredith and First Enchanter Orsino, Hawk reached the palace and stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fearsome Kunari leader. Hawk fought the Kunari leader. The fierce battle resulted in the Arashok's death and the liberation of Kirkwall from its brief occupation. The Kunari quickly withdrew from the city entirely. Hawk saved Kirkwall and earned the grudging respect of the city's Templars, mages, and nobility, along with the title that history remembers the champion of Kirkwall. Kirkwall's problems were still not over, however. After Viscount Dumar's death, Knight Commander Meredith took power and blocked all attempts to appoint a new Viscount. Under Meredith's command, the Templars tightened their grip on the mages, 
planning to suppress what Meredith saw as a growing rebellion. Anders, who spent years fighting for justice and freedom for his fellow mages, saw that the time for negotiation was past. He destroyed Kirkwall's chantry, killing hundreds, including Grand Cleric Elthina. This single act began a rebellion that spread from circle to circle, until all circles of Magi had risen up in defiance against Chantry rule. Though Anders had done the unforgivable, something stayed the champion's hand. Anders survived the day, although many others did not. Fighting spread swiftly through the city. Some mages rebelled openly, many of them succumbing to possession. Templars turned their swords on mages who rebelled and on those who did not. As First Enchanter Orsino refused to bend to the Templars, Knight Commander Meredith demanded that every mage in Kirkwall be put to the sword. Hawk saved many mages from Templar blades, keeping them from succumbing to possession or the temptations of blood magic. In the end, however, Hawk was forced to strike down Orsino, who had betrayed his own values by resorting to blood magic himself. The battle proved one thing. Knight Commander Meredith had gone mad. Hawk saw the truth of it when Meredith unsheathed her sword and the red lyrium idol from the deep roads was embedded within it. The blade fueled her hatred and paranoia as it had for months. After a horrific battle, the red lyrium of the Knight Commander's sword consumed her as she died. Meredith became a statue, her face a frozen mask of horror. Little is known of the champion since that final battle. However, Hawk's story lives on in legend and song. Memories of the indelible changes the champion of Kirkwall brought to the face of Thetis. The Mage Rebellion in Kirkwall was felt throughout Thetis, the news spreading like wildfire. The Templars clamped down in response, but each new restriction only made things worse. Led by Grand Enchanter Fiona, the mages voted for independence. The Circle of Magi would govern itself, without the Chantry and especially without the Templars. The result was cataclysmic. Two circles were destroyed, those within killed to the last mage, before the rest fled into the wilderness. Perhaps the mighty Empire of Orlais could have intervened in the war before it began, but that was not to be. Grand Duke Gaspard began a deadly civil war against Empress Selene, vying for the Orlesian throne. The mages were offered safe haven in neighboring Ferelden, but the Templars followed, and so their battle spread across all of Thetis. As head of the Chantry, Divine Justinia ordered the Templars to stand down. They refused, declaring their own independence. Thus, the war began in earnest. Templars hunting mages, mages fighting Templars. Their clashes wreaked untold destruction, and all sense of order was falling to pieces. Divine Justinia made one final desperate bid to end the war. She approached the leaders of both sides and convinced them to come to a conclave held on neutral ground. With the Chantry to mediate, mages and Templars will talk for the first time since this all began. It is our last, and perhaps our only, chance for peace.